I hope everyone can hear me. If you can, countdown is on. Get ready, here we go. And hello everybody, welcome to Life From Lockdown, episode number 54. Glad you guys can hear me. Glad you could join me this week. Um, we've got an exciting episode for you guys. Um, believe it or not, yeah, 54. Can you believe we're up to 54? That's amazing. Um, so we've got some fun things about to happen. We're going to be talking about layer masks inside of Photoshop. And then we're going to jump in and do some Fix My Photo. So if you are new here, introduce yourself in the chat if you're watching live, of course. And uh, it's a friendly group of people here are going to greet you. Um, and if you're a regular and you haven't missed a single episode, which is a lot of people here, good to see you all back. I'm really glad you're there. Um, and Bruce is in the house this week. So Bruce will be taking cocktail orders and drinks and sorting out any fights. So any bar brawls will be broken up by Bruce, of course. Never happens uh, right here. Cafe crew, the friendliest people on the internet, right? So it's always friendly here at Live From Lockdown. So how are you guys doing this week? Um, I see a lot of regulars and stuff. And we're going to jump in and we're going to chat to everybody in just a minute. But I think what we're going to do is we're just going to kick off this week. And we're going to jump into some basics, some fundamentals. And uh, if you guys have never used the layer masks before, now is your time to learn how to use them. If you've used them a little bit, you don't quite understand them. This is the time when you're going to finally understand them. And if you've been using them for years, maybe you'll learn something new here as well. So uh, great to see all you guys here. And let's get started. Thank you, Alan, for the nice word there. And, um, you know, we'll do shout outs and all that kind of fun stuff at the uh, at the end here. So what I'm going to do is just going to pop myself into that window. And uh, by the way, guys, um, do me a favor before we kick off, just hit that like button, uh, smash it into dust. I would appreciate that. And what does that do? It just lets the algorithm, uh, and YouTube just kind of push it out and let people know that we're here and we're streaming. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. And, um, it looks like, oh, people are still piling on, which is why sometimes I talk, you know, you're like, why do you talk for like 90 seconds or a couple of minutes at the beginning? Um, part of it is just because I love the sound of my own voice, but not, not really. Um, what it really is, is just as I'm just waiting because the emails have gone out, social media is going out, and I can see the numbers growing very quickly. Um, like just a second ago, there was 95, now we're 103, now we're 105. So the people are just kind of pouring in. So when I see those numbers start to level off a little bit, I know everybody's here, and it's a great time to kind of jump in. Um, so I think we're all right. Yeah, so um, some people are saying I'm a little blown out in the webcam. And yes, I am. And that's because, of course, at the very last second before we went live, my Sony camera that I'm talking to, I'm looking at that camera. It's not even on. The webcam here is actually the one we're using. Um, so, you know, I love it. Improvisation. We do what we do and we keep going. All right. So how we're looking for numbers. We're at about 130 or something like that now. So I think we're going to be good, um, and let's let's kick off. So I've got some fun things here. Let me find Birch. It's sitting on the computer, and uh, there you are. All right. So layer masks. I've got some nice visuals I'm going to share with you guys here, and yeah, the numbers are moving up, and they usually do. It usually takes the first five to ten minutes for everybody to kind of come in here. Um, so thanks for mentioning that there, um, Russ. All right. So what are layer masks? So let me open this image. I'm going to open this in Photoshop. You can't see it yet. It's okay. I've got bridge working on another screen. And here's a kind of little thing I like to show when I want to demonstrate to you guys how layer masks work. And then we're going to dive in a little bit deeper. So what we've got is two layers. We've got the bottom layer, which is mentioned as bottom and then the top layer. Which says top. Okay. So this could be anything you're working on. It could be, um, you know, photos. We could be could do, doing compositing. It could, you know, you're stacking photos. You're doing whatever you want. It could be effects, textures, adjustments, whatever you want to do. 
And essentially, if you want the layer underneath to show through, I can hide this layer or I can adjust the opacity. So if you look here, there's an opacity slider right there in the layers panel and I can move this down. And, you know, in fact, if I type in 50%, now you can see an even mix of the top and the bottom. So we're adjusting the opacity and allowing both the layers to show at the same time. Now, what if you don't want the whole layer hidden or shown or semi-transparent? You just want parts of it cut out or shown. So let's just carry on here. So hopefully you guys, those of you who are more advanced, you don't mind the more um, just kind of basic introduction, but we'll build on this. And for those of you who are new to this, welcome. You're now going to learn layer masks. And so if I want to show something underneath, what I could do is I could grab the eraser tool. And, uh, and this is probably what a lot of people do. And this is what I did when I first started using in Photoshop. I'm like, awesome. I want something underneath to show through. So I am painting essentially with the eraser tool. I say painting, painting because the eraser tool is actually a brush. I don't know if you knew that. Um, but here's the problem. It literally cuts a hole. It's like getting a pair of scissors, taking your photograph, and saying, you know what, I want to put two photos together. I'm going to cut it out for a pair of scissors and then put that over the top of the other photo. That will work. In fact, we kind of did that for an X-Acto knife. If anyone's been doing graphic design for a few years, you know, waxing and, you know, X-Acto knives, that's how we did it. And that's fine. And that's great. And, you know, that's wonderful. Until I decide, hey, you know what, I need this top layer again. I need to um, show this. What, what am I going to do? You know, because I've literally cut it out. And because we're digital, we don't need to work that way. In fact, that's known as destructive editing. Destructive means that if I close that out and then I go back into Photoshop and I'm still looking at the other camera that's not on, um, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to literally gonna have to go on a clone stamp and fix it or find that original image and replace it. So cutting it out is great when we're working with, you know, physical things, uh, paste ups and things like that. But digital, there's a better way. And the better way is to use a layer mask. So rather than cutting this out with the eraser tool, we go down with that top layer selected, we click on the layer mask. And this icon is going to give us a layer mask. All right, great. So hopefully, you know, right now, this is probably not new to everybody. But as we build, I'm, I'm curious to see Pop in the chat when you learn something new. Okay, so what we want to do now, I've got a layer mask attached. So rather than cutting out that layer now, we're cutting out the mask. So if you notice, when I created the layer mask, it's filled with white. By the way, if you create an adjustment layer, an adjustment layer also comes with a layer mask. Just so you know, whenever you see that little square area of white or rectangle, that means we'll get a layer mask. And notice that it's white. What does that mean if it's white? It means everything's showing. It's not hiding anything. So imagine, you know, you're walking around and it's daylight. Very, very bright light. It's white light that's kind of, you know, yes, there's a color balance, but essentially it's a white light and that's revealing everything. So if you're in the dark and you shine a light, wherever that light hits is going to reveal whatever is visible. So because we're in daylight, everything is lit, we can see that layer. Now, if I wanted to hide that layer, what I would do is I would make it black. So control I or command I notice now it's black. That means the lights are turned out. It's dark. You can't see it. And now you can't see that top layer. Everything is showing through underneath. Aha. Uh -huh. So that means if we use a white layer mask, it doesn't do anything. But when we turn that mask black, it hides the contents of that layer, which is the same as erasing it all or is the same as turning the opacity all the way down to zero, or the same as turning the visibility on and off. All right, great. So let's command I again. So now we're showing that whole layer. So this is where the magic of layer masks comes in. The magic is that we can choose exactly where we want to hide it by maybe making a selection. So I've made a selection there. And with that selection active, if I fill that area, with black, it's going to hide it. So let me see if I can do this in the menu. I've never do this. Yeah, okay, so here we go. Edit fill. 
that's where it is. <laughs> I always use a keyboard shortcut and I'll give you that keyboard shortcut in a second. So you can either use black or the foreground color. The foreground color is set to black. So let's just use black just to make it simple. I fill that with black and lo and behold, now it's cut out just that area that I selected. Let me prove it to you. Let's hide the layer underneath. Show the top layer. Yep, it's cut out. But unlike using the scissors, because we're using a layer mask, that means I can revert it at any time because I can paint that mask black or white whenever I want. And in case you're curious, a mask is literally a channel. So if you look under the channels, you can see there's our mask there. And I could paint here. But we'll get to painting in a second because I want to just build one thing upon the other, starting from the very, very basics. Okay, so... Now that we've got a mask and we're using that mask, let's turn the layer run underneath. Of course, it shows because that mask is cut out that little area. If I unlink the chain, I can move. That means now this mask is not tied to the position. If I select here, I can move it around. And notice it's the same area that's been unmasked. It's that square. But now I can reposition it wherever I want. And notice as I do, it's like a little spotlight shining through, except a square spotlight. And I can see the layer underneath. We know it's a layer underneath because it says bottom. If I hide it, there's a transparency. Okay, so we can move that around. Now, if, if this is linked, of course, the whole thing moves together. See that? So I was able to just use the mask by unlinking it, choosing the mask. And now I can move just the mask and the layer stays intact. Okay, the, think about how you can use that. There's a lot of things you can use that for. Okay, so I'm just going to refill this, and now I'm gonna show you the keyboard shortcut. If I wanna fill with the background color, which is white, I'm gonna hold down Command, or there would be Control on Windows. Think about this, Control or Command, the background controls the whole thing, right? Because if there's no background, there's nothing, right? So that's, everything's built on its control. You could alternate what you do on the above it right so the alt or the option key is for the foreground color this just kind of helps you remember so if i want to fill background color command delete and that fills everything with white and now we're back to where we started we're essentially reverted it that would be control uh delete on windows you know what i'm just going to turn around and i'm going to point my other camera away from me so i stop staring at it because it's not on <laughs> <laughs> and I'm used to doing that. All right, so this is where we can move this up to the next step now. And the next step is I can grab a brush. I can grab any brush I want. It could just be a regular, you know, soft edge brush. And why don't we do that right now? Hardness is all the way down, size is up. And I can paint with that brush. And notice I'm painting with black. Black is my foreground color. And because we're doing that, we're cutting a hole in our mask. And now let me show you how to view the mask. If you hold the Alt or the Option key, click the mask, you can see, oh, that's what we're doing. Oh, there's little gaps here. Let me just paint in here. I'll even sign it. And then all I need to do is click back on the layer and you can see, oh, the mask is cutting out that layer as long as you paint on the mask. Now, remember what I said, if we paint with black, we're cutting it out. If we paint with white it's showing that layer right so the black is dark it's hiding it the white is the light and it's showing what it's shining on so let's change the foreground color to white we're working on this blue layer let's see where it's hidden if i paint with white not on the layer but make sure you're on the mask and by the way how do you know when you're on a mask the little white box around there is now around the mask also if you look at the layer it says mask and the eight means it's an 8-bit channel by the way um, so yeah, so now I can go here make sure I'm painting with that white once again and now oh look at that now I'm painting with the white on that blue layer and it's showing that layer So essentially I can use this This is very very powerful for cutting things out So using the X key so just start with D D resets foreground background color Keep your finger on the X key. I want to cut out that area Tap the X again, and now I can paint it back X will paint it away and see what's happening we're flipping between foreground background color and we're painting. All right, so that's good. Now, if I want to temporarily hide the mask, I hold down the shift key, tap on the layer, and I can see the layer. See that little X is right there saying that that mask is now hidden. It's not hiding the layer, it's hiding the mask. And to show it again, shift, and then I tap on it. All right, so that's kind of useful. 
What about one other thing? If I hit the forward slash key, notice what it does is it shows that mask. Let me show you. Notice in the channels that I have open, because I did say this mask is a channel. So it's actually just built off, you know, before there was layers in Photoshop in version 1, 2, 2.5. In version 3, they introduced layers into Photoshop. How did they make layers and masks work? With channels. And that's kind of, I actually started on Photoshop before there was layers, and we literally did things with channels. So a mask is just a channel, guys. And if I hit the backslash key, what it will do is it will show that channel. So the backslash key shows or hides the channel. And with that channel showing on top of the layer, I can hide the layer and we can see just the channel, which is the mask. Same thing. And I can paint and notice you can see this red color. Why can we see the red color? Because that's the color of the layer mask. So backslash key will show that. So if you just want to quickly see where you're masking, where you're not masking, use that. Um, and don't worry about Dale, guys. If you're late, it's okay. We haven't even jumped into the good stuff. We've just laid out the basics right now of layer masks. And the replay will be live right here at Photoshop Cafe on YouTube as soon as we're finished. So meanwhile, guys, um, let's keep going. And if you're getting any value out of this, do me a favor. Hit that like button. Smash it. And uh, if you already hit it once, you don't have to hit it again because it's a toggle. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. All right, so that is the basics of working with masks. Okay, and let me just kind of show you. I want to make sure that you guys can really understand. So I've made these cool little visuals here that I'm, I'm very proud of. And uh, essentially, this is what happens when we use a layer mask. Let me put the channels back in here. So there we go. This is what we see. There's our layer. There's our mask. And that's what's happening. It's cutting out that layer on top and allowing the layer underneath. Maybe that visualization helps some people. And here it is there. This is what you see flat. So there we go. If we cut it out, top layer, bottom layer, half of it is masked black. And here we're painted. So hopefully that visualization just helps somebody understand what's going on there. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to show you something even more exciting. And uh, let me bring this in. I'm just going to give you guys a little bit of theory for a second. And then we'll come back to this again. So that uh, let me just drag that into Photoshop. Let's get this open. Okay. So here's the thing. Look at the bottom I only focus on the bottom here. Here are two layers one on top of the other. If I'm at 100% brightness, which is 0% opacity, which is just white, right? So if we've got white turned up to 100, that's, that's white, right? 100% of white is white. And that means you get 100% opacity, you see the entire layer. If I turn white all the way down, that becomes black. Black is 0% white, right? So if I turn that down to 0 that means that you're going to see nothing on that layer and everything on the layer underneath is going to show through. So here's the thing I want for you guys to get. And this is going to help you guys a lot is I don't just have to paint with black and white. I can paint with gray. Let me show you. Let me just fill this. So let's go back to our layer with our mask. I'm going to grab a brush. And I'm going to tap and I'm going to choose 50% gray. So here's the color picker. To get 50% gray, I just hit the B for brightness and I choose 50. Okay, so here I am. That's 50% gray. So let me grab a brush and I'm going to paint with this brush and look at this. Lo and behold, this is producing a 50% transparency. Hmm, interesting. So that means if I want to change the amount of transparency, what happens if I go 75%? Now it's 75% visible. Hmm. So if anyone ever says, hey, I want a screen, a 90% screen, well, just go under here, type in 90. Graphic designers get this sometimes. And you know, you get it from people that use the term camera ready art. Have you ever had that? People are like, hey, give me a 90% screen on that. That used to be easy back in the day, um, you know, when we use screen. But now it's like, how do you do that in Photoshop? Just do exactly. Go in here. 
create a mask, type in 90%, and now there's 90% on the top layer. Now, if they meant by that 90% screen, they meant they want this 90% transparent, no problem. Just tap on here, and instead of 90, do 10%. So that means we only want to see 10%, which is 90% invisible. Type in here, you can see 10% of that top layer is showing. Okay, so you can type in an exact percentage of transparency. Okay, to some people, graphic designers, that's a big deal. Photographers, like, who cares? Doesn't matter. This is why it matters, because what if you were painting, you're dodging and burning, doing all that kind of fun stuff, and you don't necessarily want to adjust it 100% all the time. You want to fade it. You want to blend it. So what you can do is if you're using a Wacom tablet, turn on your brush settings and your brush settings here, go down to transfer. Under transfer, we turn on opacity jitter and set it to pan pressure. So that means now if I paint in here and I'm painting with this brush, nothing's happening yet, right? Because it's white. Let's change it to black. And now I'm blending. I can gently blend this in. Look at this. Nice. Now someone's going to ask, why don't you use transparency? I'll show you in a second. Let me drop the flow down to maybe like 10% or 12%. And so now I'm painting with flow. And look at this. I can use pen pressure now and gently blend these layers in together. And the more I keep going, eventually I can hide the bottom and I can just bring that in. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so somebody asks me right now, why not use opacity? Why, why am I going through all this and I'm setting this percentage? Well, I'll show you why. Because maybe I want to do a 50% opacity now. Okay, so I want to paint with 50%. And so why don't I set my opacity 50? Let's do it right now. Set my opacity to 50. Okay, wonderful. So now I'm 50% opaque, and I'll turn off pen pressure. So now I'm painting this 50%, right? But notice what happens when I go over the areas that I've already done. Oh, now it's adding 50%. And what happens if I do it in little bits, and I try to do the edge? Oh, let's get these edges. Okay, oh, let me hide this so you can just see the layer mask. This is what's happening. Okay, I need to get that to 50%. Oh, but it's at 50. Okay, I can do 50 here. See, I'm having a hard job matching that, right? So if I turn the opacity all the way up to 100%, and instead of using that, I know we went deep real quick, and instead of using opacity, I decide to set a shade of gray, and I set this to 50% gray, instead of 50% opacity, look at this. Oh, now I've got 50% gray. Oh, beautiful, look at this. Nice and smooth. Oh, yeah. Now I'm not having problem matching that at all. I can get it perfect because it's always going to paint 50% now. So let's turn that on. Look at that beautiful gradient, smooth. Try and fix that using 50% opacity. You can't. So there's a reason why um, it works that way. So that's a cool skill to know. And uh, not a lot of people have figured that out or know that. So now you guys do. And I'm going to ask you once again, because we keep doing this, it's fun. Um, hit that like button if you're learning anything new here. All right. So now we're going to take what we learned. And, uh, and if you jumped in and you're like, whoa, I got lost. Don't worry. The replay will be live. You guys can watch this as many times as you want. And seriously, wait, once you get this, layers and masks are not going to be a mystery to you anymore. You're going to get it. And it's just going to make you so much more powerful in Photoshop because these masks are like the most powerful tool in Photoshop. All right. So anyway, so another nice thing about being able to do this, and let me just bring up this little visualization that I used. I just want to bring it up again. Just so you can see, does this start to make sense now? 75%, 50%. So the shade of gray is directly proportional to the transparency. I've even created another another little uh, visualization. And uh, this is something I'm about to do right now. And I'm going to show you guys this. Okay, so here we are. Look at this. So if I was to apply a gradient across this mask, there's the top and the bottom. Notice 0%. There's 100%. There's 50%. 
But notice there's 25%, there's 75%. So you can set it to whatever percentage you want. And if you create a smooth gradient, you get a smooth blend. Let me show you that right now. So here we are with the layer mask. In fact, in case you missed it, whoa, I'm going to apply this layer mask again. Let's delete the layer mask. And with this mask, this layer selected, go down, apply a layer mask. Notice it's white. The lights are on. We want to dim those lights. We want to fade them, but we want to do it evenly. So let's grab the gradient tool. Go up to the settings under gradient. Choose the first option, which is black to white. Yours will be under basics. I always show this, but this is something I do. Yours will look like that if it's the first time. I don't like having to open these little um, menus all the time, so I just select these and drag them to the very top so they're almost visible. Okay, so grab the first one, black to white. If you set your foreground background color to black and white, that, that'll also work too, foreground and background. All right, so what we want to do now is with that mask selected, with the gradient, set that gradient to linear, make sure your blend mode is normal, opacity is at 100, and now I can just drag across and look at this, we get this beautiful, smooth blend. Now, if you don't like it, you want it to go the other way, grab the top left, drag to the bottom right, and you can reverse it. Alt, Alt or Option, you can see, okay. So you're using this gradient to blend. Now, if you want this to be very abrupt, make a very short drag, and you're going to get a very abrupt, you know, to the point of making it hard. As I go further, that line shows where it's going to blend. So you want a larger blend, an even larger blend. And here's the thing, you can even start off the page, so you're never going to have 100 or 0. Let me go all the way to the edges. There's no 100 or 0 because I've actually blended it all the way out. So you don't even have to blend within the document, you can go outside of the document. All right, let me show you a real world example on how this works. And you might have seen these images I'm about to show you because this is literally one of the, I think it's the second most popular tutorial I've ever done on YouTube. So I'm going to show you guys this. And this is a back in the day when Adobe stock was Dollar Photo Club. You guys remember that? All right. So here's a picture of uh, someone and it's fall time. So we're going to grab this and I'm going to combine the images. So all I need to do is drag this image up into the tab of the image I want to go into and I have not released yet. I'm going to hold down the shift key to put it in the middle and then I'm going to release. And now what we've got is one layer on top of the other. Great. So let's apply our layer mask. And now we are going to do the very same thing that we did with the gradient with the top and bottom, except this time we're doing it with photos. So I'm going to start on the left and I'm going to drag to the right and release. And of course, I went the wrong way. It's okay. Just drag the other way. And look at this. We get this beautiful blend. We can try it different ways. All I'm doing is just dragging different ways until you get it how you like it. So what I'm going to do is just create a soft blend here. But I want to show a little bit more of her face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a brush. And with the brush, I want a black brush as the foreground color. I want to make sure it's a nice soft brush. Hardness is all the way down. And all I need to do is just gently paint. In fact, I'm going to drop the flow down to about 10%. I'm going to hit Shift 1, and that will adjust the flow. By the way, to adjust the opacity, tap a number key. Watch the opacity up on the top left. If I tap 1, it'll give me 10%. If I tap 5, it'll give me 50%, blah, blah, blah. 0 will give me 100 if I want to adjust that and flow, hold down the shift key, tap the number two, give me 20%, 660, and one will give me 10%. So shift one will give you 10% flow. And the reason I'm using flow rather than opacity is I've got another video on it. Check it out, guys. And it's smoother for painting with the flow rather than it is to do the opacity. Opacity has its place. I did the video. You can see it there on YouTube. All right, so let me just begin to paint now. Notice this, I'm painting with black and notice her face is coming back. And I'm able to just blend this in because I've got this low flow, so it's not all happening at once. And it just gives me a smoother blend. See that? 
So we can just gently blend that in however we want. Alt or Option key, we look at the mask, and there we go. All right, guys, so if you got any questions on layer masks, drop them into that chat right now, and here's the chat, boom. It's in the screen. Um, it's going to take about a minute or so for this to come through, and um, good to see some of you regulars there, and just drop your questions in there right now. And once again, you're probably just hearing it right now because of the delay. Uh, so good to see you, Hannah, Andrew, Bradley, Jan, Tracy, David, um, Andrew, Keith, Susan. Uh, we've got uh, lots. These are all regulars. And so something happened there with Tracy. What did Tracy do? Uh, Tracy did something. She spilt her. She just spit her GNT all over the keyboard. Oh, Bruce, are you telling jokes? All right, so we'll get to all this chat later. Okay, so I'm just looking for questions there. So if no questions are coming through, maybe I covered everything really well. Um, I'm just going to give you a few more seconds there if you want to ask any like, romper room. That's funny. I, I know what that is. It's like a kid's show. Um, in New Zealand, do they? I don't think they have that in the U.S. New Zealand, maybe Australia has it too. Wait and have your name called. Oh, got you. <laughs> all right, I get that. Um, that was actually pretty funny. Um, or the Mickey Mouse Club, for those of you who are not familiar with Rumpa Room, here is Brittany and Justin and all the others. All right. Okay, guys. So uh, let's go back. We had it here. Let's go and find a chat. All right. So there are no questions in here. That means we're going to jump into our next segment. Um, just checking those questions one more time. Okay, here we go. Here's some questions. Sorry, it just takes a while because of the delay. Let's bring this in. Because uh, these are always useful for everyone. Good to see you guys. Can you use that for a circle? Absolutely. You can use a circle with the mask. You can use anything you want. Would you use the same method to overlay a tiger face to a grant? Yes, absolutely I would. And in fact, I have another tutorial where I did a woman and a tiger's face together. Um... It was big in the U.S. when I was a kid. Okay, so they had it here as well. Great. When you were a kid. Can you use multiple layer masks? You can. Great question. How do you use multiple layer masks? Let me show you a little trick. So right now I've got a layer mask here. What if I wanted to do a circle over this? What I would do is I hit Control G and that puts it into a group. And uh, thanks for that question, uh, Donald. So what I've done now is I've put this in a group. Just select the layer, Control, Command, G. And what I can do is I can apply a layer mask to that group. And now, if I wanted to mask this out into a circle, let me just draw a circle. And by the way, the uh, spacebar allows me to move the circular selection as I do it. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to mask out the outside of that. So Command, Shift, I will inverse that mask. So it's Control, Shift, I, or select inverse so inverse just means you swap it so instead of having the circle selected i have everything but the circle selected and i'm just going to fill it with black and that's going to hide the outside there so boom Control d and look at that so now i was able to stack two layer masks on top of each other i can hit Control g and i can put another layer mask in here so you can start to stack multiple layer masks so let's just do a little rectangle there let's put a layer mask on it look at that now we've got that kind of circle with that if i want to invert that control i and we cut a little piece out of that and so you can keep doing that you can keep stacking masks on top of each other by using the layer groups and that's a, a kind of nice and easy way to do that so hopefully that was useful guys all right so if you're ready and i think we are ready we're going to move into our next segment because we didn't do it last week because we fixed my photo. This week, we're going to fix your photo. And hello, everybody. Welcome to Fix My Photo. I, I always do this like hello as if we're just starting again and it wasn't like, you know, it's like someone hiding in plain sight. Like, you know, I'm hiding. I, I can see you. 
yeah, we, we were just here. Um, okay, so Fix My Photo. What is Fix My Photo? Fix My Photo is where you guys submit your photos and I edit your photos live and spontaneous. Like literally sometimes I don't even know what I'm going to be fixing before I go in there. And um, so sometimes you're as surprised as I am. So if you want to submit your photos for Fix My Photo, um, we, we're doing previously selected photos, of course, but you can submit your photo for next week by uploading it to fixmyphoto.net. Fixmyphoto.net, upload your raw file, or your if you don't have a raw file, your TIFF or JPEG, keep it full resolution. Don't send me the edited versions because I can't edit them when they're already edited as efficiently. And put your name in the file name so we know it's you, so I can give you a shout out, give you the credit, all that kind of fun stuff. And just to keep it fair, no more than three submissions per person per week. Otherwise, we're going to get, you know, 50 uploads from one person. And then, you know, it's, it's hard for everyone to have a turn. All right, guys. So as Bruce just said there, do me a favor. Hit that like button if you're liking this. If you missed anything, you will see the replay afterwards. It'll be live when we're finished. And if you haven't yet subscribed... Do me a favor and subscribe. So yes, we have twice as many people watching as we have likes. So that like is that thumbs up. All right. Oh, you guys are probably sick of hearing about that. All right, let's move on. All right, so we've got some nice submissions here this week. Um, oh, what do we got here? This looks kind of cool. So Jeff McLean. Jeff McLean. Look at these nice shots of kayaking. I like these. Hmm. This is giving me reminiscence of... Oh, look at this. I can see there's one person here. Did they put the thing over your nose so you don't get water up your nose? Is that what that is? I'm going to guess it is. And then uh, the other person behind her. And there she is there. All right. So... I'm thinking about doing something fun with this. Like, this might be good for an out-of-bounds effect. So why don't we do some quick adjustments first? Now, I'm in Lightroom because the way I've got it set up is when you guys submit your photos, it goes in the Dropbox, and then I set that up as a watch folder inside of Lightroom. So when I launch Lightroom, it automatically imports all your photos. So when I go into this catalog in Lightroom, your photos, boom, 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 just appear, and, uh, and they're always there. So I don't have to go looking for them. Now, the adjustments or the develop module inside of Lightroom is identical to the adjustments inside of Camera Raw. Absolutely 100% the same. All right, so what I want to do is I want to make just a little bit of adjustment here. So let's, first of all, it's dark, it's contrasty. I want to reduce the contrast. There's two ways to do it. One is to slide the contrast slider down, which is always a good idea because Lightroom kicks in a little bit of its own about 10%, I believe, so I just, or 10, so I just gone minus 10, reduces the contrast. Contrast is how dark it is in the darks and how light it is in the lights. When you look at a photo and it's really dark, dark, dark in the darks and it's really light in the lights, it looks, just doesn't look good. You know what I'm talking about? Like it's just too high contrast. It's not, it's not easy on the eyes. So I like to start that way. The other way I like to do it, and I'm not saying this is this way with Jeff's photo, it's not, it's a great photo. Um, but you know what I'm talking about. All right, so I'm going to put the highlights to the left. And so what it's doing is see these areas that are blown out in the water and particularly in the kayak, by pushing the highlights back, it recovers a little bit of that detail. So what I'm doing is I'm squeezing out the dynamic range that's in this photo. And I see Jeff's in the house. Good to see you. Thank you. Swallow Falls State Park, MD. This is where this was shot, Maryland. All right, beautiful. It was probably cold. It looks cold. Um, so now we're going to do the other thing with shadows. Let's increase our shadows, and this brings out detail. So if I was to hit the before, after, we can see I brought out more dynamic range. I like that. Another thing that kind of makes things look just a little bit warmer in outdoor photos, sometimes I like to take the temperature and just warm it up just a touch. There we go. Before and after. Maybe because I live in California, I feel like everything should be warm. Of course, there are times when things can look cold and you know, frigid. Actually, that'd be kind of cool. If I was in Alaska, I'd probably do them cooler. But you know what? I'm going to bring it down just a little bit. I kind of like that. So a lot of the time I like to warm it up. In this case, I'm going to cool it down. Great. All right. So we've got some nice adjustments here. Let's bring this into Photoshop. So we're right clicking. We're choosing edit in Photoshop. 
All right, so here we are in Photoshop and we want to do one of those cool out of bounds effects. So let's hit Control J and essentially, well, why don't we crop this first? Control J, by the way, just copies the layer and gives me a new layer. So I'm going to just crop this in a little bit. Looks good. And uh, let's go up. And you know what? I'm even going to crop it in a bit more. Let's do that. Let's crop it a little bit more. All right. So what I want to do now is I want to put another layer behind it and I'm just going to fill it with white. Boom. Pop that in the bottom. All right, we've got that layer. We're hiding those layers and all we've got now is the top layer. So what I want to do is I want to make a little bit of a selection around here. So let's grab the selection tool. Why don't we try select subject and see how well it works. So grab the selection tool here and we have the option to select subject and you know what, boom. That looks good. It's good enough for rock and roll. Might clean that up just a little bit. When I put my hand on the tablet, it kind of messed things up. Let me close these that we're not using right now. Let's just get rid of these documents. There we go. And I'm just going to close out these others too. Just so they're not there. We don't need to look at those. There we go. All right, so I'm going to go into Select a Mask and see what kind of an edge we've got. By the way, I don't know if you guys have noticed there's a bug. You have to kind of just tap that opacity to get it to work right. Okay, so that edge is looking a little hairy. No pun intended. Um, hmm. Let's see what we can do. I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to paint with this brush. And I'm just painting around it just to kind of give a nice edge to this kayak. Okay, so I'm just doing this quickly, so it's going to be good enough. And then we're going to set this selection to a layer mask. New layer with layer mask, click OK. And now we've cut it out. So what I want to do now is I want to show it on top of the background. So here's our top layer. You don't see it right now because it's showing. So what I want to do is create a frame. I'm going to create a picture frame and you know what, why don't we put the picture frame here just for fun and remember what we learned about using layer masks. So here's the thing about, let me turn the top layer off so we can see this. If I want to cut this out with that layer mask, sometimes I can make the selection first and now if I apply the mask, what it will do is it will hide everything outside of that selection. So let's do that now. And now, if we hide the one underneath, it's starting to pop through. So I could put this, you know, you guys have all seen it. You put it on a computer screen or a frame or something like that. In fact, I think there might even be some frames inside of Photoshop. Let's have a look uh, under filter. Gosh, I haven't done this for a while, but let's let's see if we can just quickly find that. I believe it's under the filter gallery. Let's have a look. Um, do the neural filters do the frame? Let's have a look. Blur gallery, distort, da, 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 filter, filter gallery. Why am I not seeing you? Oh, it's grayed out. Why is it grayed out? A 16 bit image. Here we go. Change the mode. If you see things you want are grayed out, change it from 16 bit to 8 bit. And now we can see there's our filter gallery. All right, so the filter gallery comes live. I believe there's frames in here. I'm not going to spend a lot of time in here. Um, stylize, distort, brush edges. I'm not saying, okay, I'm just going to make my own frame really quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this. That's the selection. Command click to load the selection. And then I'm going to add another one to the outside. Hitting the shift key. That will add another layer. So now we've got that. And what I want to do is create a layer underneath. And I don't know, let's fill it with brown. And let's choose filter noise. Okay, here we go. Now I'm going to show you how I make wood. You know what? I'm not going to bother. I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. So just pretend that's a wooden frame. And then we pop this layer over the top. Now it's starting to show through the frame. And the way that we make this look kind of realistic, let me show you right now, is let's just select all of these layers together. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these into a smart object. 
and then I'm going to hit Control T just for that. Right click and I'm going to choose Distort and let's change the angle of it. Okay, so we're just going to kind of set this to a to an angle. Let's just go here. And the reason everything else is showing just because I put this in a smart object. And uh, let's just make this bigger. Here we go. And then at this point here, I'm just going to bring it down. There we go. And then all I need to do is just put a drop shadow behind it. So let's select that layer. We're going to choose the effects and we're going to grab a drop shadow. And I can just dra drag that drop shadow down there. You can move a drop shadow, by the way, by dragging on it. And let's just put a little drop shadow there underneath. Give it a little more opacity. And this is essentially we're doing that out of bounds effect. Now, I'd like to see a little shadow there in the water. Wouldn't you guys like to see shadow in the water? It'll make it look even better. To do that, just double click on that smart object. Welcome, Ray. And we're just going to pop in here. So we've got that layer on top. And all I need to do is just create a shadow. So I'm just actually just going to paint it in by hand. So I'm just going to create a layer underneath. Grab a brush. And I'm literally just going to paint this in by hand just because I'm being lazy. And see what I'm doing here? I'm just painting in that shadow. There we go. Hit Control S to save it. And that will populate back in here and then we go now you've got this kind of out of bounds effect where the kayak is coming out of the page so um yeah not the most stunning example of it i've ever done but that's what you get when you're live and spontaneous but i think you guys get the idea what i would actually probably rather do let me go under here here's an interesting new tool so if i don't like the way this is distorted and i want to change it if i right click on the um believe it's on the smart object we have this new option i don't know if you guys have seen this let me see if i can find it reset transformation and that will reset any transformation that you've done inside of a smart object and by the way that works in photoshop 2021 and newer so i'm actually going to go the other way because i didn't like the way that distortion was looking let's try it this way instead and uh so p steelman like that so what happens if we decide to do it this way instead? You know, we could get it like that, or maybe we like it like this. So I can just decide, you know what? I didn't like that distortion. It kind of looked cheap and chintzy to me. So if we do it this way, boom. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that looks, that looks better. And so you can always reset that. All right, moving on, moving on. We're spending too much time on that. Let's go to go, go to go. Let's go to Lightroom. And so that was something I did with Jeff's photo there. That was fun. Thank you, Jeff, for that photo. And uh, let's see what else we've got here. Hmm. I'm seeing some nice photos. Ooh, that's kind of cool. I like that one, Dana. I like that a lot. I like that a lot, a lot. What do we got here? David. Oh, that's interesting, too. I like that. And Henry, that's nice. And you saw a polar bear? Is this in Alaska? I'm super jealous. That's cool. You know what? Let me show you something real quick with this. Just something, just for fun. I like this photo. It doesn't need a lot. Um, maybe I'll just recover the highlights a little bit just to bring out, you know, so those highlights don't get blown out. Just brings it back just a little bit. There we go. And what I, you know, here's something I want to show you guys just for fun. Is everyone always does a vignette, and when they do a vignette, they always do a vignette to dark. But this is kind of fun if you want to make, you know, a, a lovey-dovey kind of style one. We're going to go in here. We're going to grab our radial, and I'm selecting the radial here. And so with this radial selected, what we can do is we can invert it. So that means that, let's see if that's working correctly. No, we want to invert it the other way. Okay, so now we're working on the outside. Look at this. See, that's a typical vignette. But what if we go the other way? And go all the way up to white. And uh, now we can play around by adjusting this vignette. 
you know, we could even do an angle if we wanted. That's one of the nice things about this. Look at this. And, uh, you know, we could create something a little bit different. Now, if you're worried about this, oh, no, I can see bits. They're showing. It's okay. You can just go into whites and, you know, you can push it all the way out and reduce the blacks and just play around with the shadows. Let's do the highlights. And, and you know, eventually you can force it and get rid of those areas that you don't want to show in there. Uh, let me just go back in there. Um, of course, the other ways you could just heal them, but I kind of like these areas kind of going off. I don't know about you guys, but I actually kind of like that. And I'm going to bring this back just a little bit so we can sort of just see a little bit of that background out there. And why don't we make the background warm on the outside or black and white? Let's just take the color all the way down. Black and white. So it's kind of pencil sketchy kind of on the outside. And then moving into this beautiful polar bear in the middle. Yeah, I think that's kind of fun. Do you guys like that? Um, hate it when your bits are showing. That's very, by the way, that's very Star Trek of you. Your parts are showing. Hey, I'm C-3PO. No, don't worry. I'm fluent in over 6 million forms of communication. Okay, not good. All right. Um, so if we look at this before, whoa, let's get that there before and after okay so something weird is happening there uh because my before is showing me inside the that view interesting i didn't know before or after worked on there until i go into develop this way okay before after something different right all right let's do something else i wanted to do oh i'm tempted i'm tempted let's have a look at this Let's have a look at this one by Dana. Dana Carr. David, you're there. It's in Alaska. It's Kek Tovik. Kek Tovik? I'm saying that completely wrong. I do want to go to Alaska one day. I've never been before. Thank you, Zach. I'm glad you like that. Zach Multimedia. All right. So here is a photograph by Dana. This is a super high contrast situation, meaning that it's lots of light and dark. And, um, and this is what happens, you know, when it's getting later in the day and uh, the foreground gets dark, the, you know, if you want to show the clouds. If you expose this, let's go to the develop setting. Oh, it's a JPEG. Bummer! Ugh. If you had given me a raw file, if you had a raw file, I could bring so much more dynamic range out of this. I will do what I can with the JPEG, um, but we recover these highlights. See how it just kind of flows out to white? He, there's no detail there. Had this been a raw file, I could have recovered a little bit more. Shadows, I can probably recover a bit. Yeah, we go. Let's increase our exposure. Yeah, we can do that. Recover our highlights. So we're recovering some decent dynamic range here. But unfortunately, because this is a JPEG, I can't get as much out of this as I would if this had been a raw file. Now, one of the problems that happens when you do this a lot is color fringing otherwise known as chromatic aberration where you get that's because of the different lamps of the different wavelengths the way they hit each color is a different wavelength and they hit the lens you get the color fringing that's how it happens it's not because things are out of alignment it's just curved lens and light in the way it bends all right so or the way it travels in the straight lines but different angles okay so what we're going to do is fix that we can go down and see how well it can do it um, let's go down here under the lens correction. We can choose remove chromatic aberration. And yeah, definitely looking a lot better before, after. And we can turn on enable profile corrections would also help. Now, because this is a JPEG, uh, Dana, are you there? I don't know what camera or lens was used. Otherwise, I could choose the Canon. Let's just assume they use the Canon, I don't know, 5D and assume what what's the wave what is the oh, so we don't get all the metadata either that's another problem so this is f22 and we are shooting at 4.8 millimeter okay so this is on a phone or this is on a gopro or something maybe we don't know okay so let's just assume it's a gopro and no it's not working so this is another reason, guys, why you want to shoot in, and I'm going to use the DJI profile, and that will probably help. Yeah, definitely does. Um, so maybe this is an Osmo. Another problem with the JPEG is you don't know what camera was used, what the settings were, 
as well as not getting as much dynamic range. So this is other reasons why I like to use um, RAW, but we were able to guess. And so sometimes you just have to guess, choose the camera manually. And then if we look at this, there's before and after we got rid of a lot of the distortion. We've made this cacti look a lot better. And uh, let me just see one other thing. It's definitely looking better. But there's another thing we can do down here if we even want to go further. And as we go under the profile, we can choose manual. And if we want to get rid of the defringe, let me just click on this tool here. I don't know if you guys have ever used this. And you can see the weird color there for the fringing. Click with that. And we can adjust the amount. And let's see if we can get it in here. See how successful we are. Oh, yeah, there we go. Look at that. So we can just go in and dial in the color and we can dial out the color fringing right there by doing it manually. Select the color. And then this is kind of like, you know, when we use um, hue saturation for changing the color, this is doing the same thing. We're just dialing in the color range. How much is the amount we want there? But it's not really a lot of green and yellow we're getting rid of. Really, the problem is that color. And that's how we reduce it. Um, all right so let's have a look here and let's just have a quick look at this photograph we're not done yet but we're definitely getting a lot better if we look at this fix my photo lfl we go before and let's go into the develop module and we can see you know yeah we're looking we're looking a lot better great all right so let's just see if i warm this up a little bit the color temperature Play around a little bit with the tint. Now, these are kind of places sometimes where I would go into the individual color grading. And why don't we do that? So I'm going to go into the color grading here. And let's go to the shadows. And we're going to pull this a little bit more into the, into the blues. Let's go into the highlights. I'm going to give it. So I'm just going to kind of give this a mood. All right. So, you know, clearly that's too much, right? So we can adjust this. Let's go down here. And let's go into the individuals and go all the way to the end here. So under the global. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but we're, we're going to try. I'm just kind of playing around with different color adjustments here. Mm, before and after. That's interesting. There's many other ways we could do this. Um, you know what might look nice though? I'm just thinking, what if we make this black and white? So let's click the black and white. There we go. Now, one of the surprising tools that makes a good black and white is using the temperature slider. Notice how that really affects it. Even though we're in black and white, what it's doing is it's changing the way things are mixing between the color channels. And then we can kind of dial in something. I want to do a gradient here. I'm going to use a gradient on the top to the bottom. Let's just make this moody. Let's just do that quickly. And let's do another gradient from there. Make it moody, but not as moody. So we're kind of dialing that in. We're getting something kind of cinematic. I, I'm getting that kind of vibe. So let's make it more cinematic. So I'm going to unlock the width and height. And I'm going to drag this down. Let's go Cinemascape, guys. Let's go Old Western. So I'm going to go there, hit enter to apply it. Yeah. Now we're really getting somewhere with cinematic. Let's go down here under the presence. Let's give it a punch of texture. Nice. Let's give it a little bit of clarity. What can we do with this dehaze? Let's make it a little hazy, but I don't want to do the whole thing. So I'm just going to undo this again. And I feel like I want some haze at the top. So I'm going to create another gradient. Like how many gradients is this guy going to use? As many as we want. And I'm going to reset everything by double clicking on effect. So we've got a new gradient and we haven't done anything on it yet. And I'm going to add a little haze. So notice I'm just adding that haze with there. Oh, nice. That's working. But I don't know the cactus, the cactus. It's OK. Relax. We can use the range mask and uh, maybe we'll use some luminance here and see if that works. I don't know if it will, but let's try it. There we go. And I can roll that off the shadows now. So now it's just affecting the highlights because I used the range mask out of the shadows. We're getting there. We're getting something out of this, guys. 
Oh, thank goodness. Um, and are we in Lightroom? Okay. And by the way, we're, we're in Lightroom here. And if we were in Camera Raw, we'd be doing exactly the same thing. All right. Don't worry, we're not finished. We will go into Photoshop. Now I'm adding my color grade. Now it's starting to look somewhat interesting. Um, I want to reset it though. So I'm just going to double click on it. And what I want to do is just go into the shadows here. Let's add the tone, that Western, you know, good old Western tone. Let's go into the highlights. Let's do the same thing, maybe more towards the yellows. I can almost hear that the whistle, you know, it's going to do the thing, you know, like the Mandalorian. How does it go? Bruce, can you do it for us? Um, I'm clearly I'm, I'm whistling really well. What is it that kind of thing, you know, they do on the Westerns. Um, all right, so let's go down here and I want to add a little vignette around here. So under effects, I'm going to choose the vignette. I'm going to turn the amount down. I'm going to add a nice vignette around the edges. Let's bring that midpoint in. Let's make it less round. Feather it more. Let's increase that feather. So we've got a big feather going on here. All right, now we're starting to get somewhere. And if I hit the backslash key, you can see before and after. All right, let's bring this into Photoshop. So we're going to choose edit into Adobe Photoshop. So hopefully you guys are enjoying this. Um, looks like plenty of you are there watching it. So I'm going to hit the edit. I'm going to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. So I want this to look like this inside of Photoshop. I don't see enough likes, guys. That's 136 likes of 213 people watching. Come on. I'm not going to finish this if I don't get more likes. I'm just kidding. Let's keep going. All right. So what we're going to do is hit Control J. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to create a nice slide sandwich effect. So we're going to change this from overlay. See how it gets very, very dark and moody. And now I want to choose filter blur. I'm going to grab a Gaussian blur, a Gaussian blur, however you want to say it. And I want to get a nice soft. Now watch how this works. See how it looks normal and then you push it up and then it gets this dreamy kind of look and oh look at that it's dreamy it's beautiful and then you keep going it's even more dreamy and now it sucks. So the sweet spot is somewhere in the dreamy zone depending on how dreamy don't go beyond when it starts to suck don't keep pushing and if you're not seeing an effect you know so I'm seeing it looks like the sweet spots in here somewhere. So I'm going to go about there. I'm liking that's 5.8. So, you know, you can write down 5.8 and use it on every photo and it won't work because every photo is different. So the sweet spot's going to be whatever it works for your photo. And now I'm going to take the opacity, push it all the way to the left. Why? Well, if I want to apply this, let's go to 100. Here's a tip for you guys. If you want to be heavy handed, start at 100% opacity and then dial it back. And then you're like, oh, okay, that's good. We're at 54%. And we're like, yeah, looks good. If you want to be subtle, push it all the way to zero. Just look away, you know, to other things. Then look back and allow your eye to calibrate. In fact, everything's foggy right now. Allow your eye to calibrate. Oh gosh, it's so different. And um, actually in a good way, my glasses are so foggy. I can actually see better without them. Um, my reading glasses, there we go, okay. So now my eye is calibrated to the unedited version. And now as I push the opacity, I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, it's almost too much now. We're at 36%. And now I think it's too much. And that's because you are making those adjustments based on a no adjustment rather than 100% filter. So if you want to be heavy handed, start it at zero, wind it back. If you want to be subtle, start it, um, start at 100, wind it back. If you want to be subtle, start at zero, wind it forward. I'm at 27% and I'm like, you know what? I don't want to do it any more than that. All right. And that's the difference. 27 versus 57% is the difference in a calibrated versus a non-calibrated eye. All right. So moving on. So let's go into the adjustment here. And I know these things called photo filters. We love photo filters. And these allow me to add color, warming filters. This is a warming. These are actually tied to actual filters. You can go buy an 85 warming filter if you want or CTO, color temperature orange. You can buy these or you can just choose a color. And uh, let's just go down here. Let's make it a little bit more brownie. 
And in fact, I'm pushing more into the reds. And all I need to do now is adjust the density and I can determine once again, I can go to 100 and I can wind it back and say that looks good. Or I can go to zero, wind it forward and say, now it's starting to hit at about 55. In this case, I want to go heavy. So I'm starting 100, I'm going back. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go all the way and we're going to use a low mask. So let's grab our gradient and I want to blend this down. Awesome. So now we, well, you know what? Let's go the other way. Yeah, I think I like that better. So now we've got that color in the sky. Foreground color is not as much. Let me give you the last tip that I'm going to give you on using layer masks. And also, so it kind of ties, it ties in with the beginning and also what we're doing here. I just take the opacity down just a little bit because it feels too much. But I would like more to show in the bottom. What do I do? Do, do I create a new mask? Here's something really fun. Density. Did you guys ever wonder what that density slider does? What that density slider does is if I move it all the way to the left. Oh, look, the layer mask is hidden. What it does is it turns down the black. Let me show you. Alt or option. Turn it on here. It turns down that black. It makes it more gray. Remember what we did it when we started. When everything is white, that means everything on that layer can show. The lights are on. When we turn the lights off, it becomes black. Everything on that layer is hidden. Now, it's not hiding the whole layer, is it? Because the mask is a gradient. So that means the darker areas are completely hidden. And that's with density 100. That's how layer masks work by default. But now, if I adjust the density, it's going to adjust the blacks there. And notice what happens. Let me make sure I'm on the mask and not the layer. And notice as I do that, it allows that color to show through more in the bottom. All right, so that means I can have color all the way through, but a little more in the sky, a little less in the bottom. And I think this is looking pretty good. So we've got this kind of cool Western kind of thing. Um, so, so there we go, guys. That's what we have. What I'm going to do is, well, thank you, Super High Me. Uh, well, okay, I know what you do. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this out and then we're going to do questions and answers for the rest of you guys who don't want to do that. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this week's live from lockdown. I'm Colin Smith. If you like this or got any value out of it, hit that subscribe button, um, you know, so you can become part of the cafe crew and you don't miss any of our videos. If you've already subscribed, do me a favor and hit that uh, like button. It helps us with the algorithm. And uh, if you have subscribed or not subscribed, hit that like button anyway. That was the smoothest closing I've ever done. It was an absolute mess. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe. All right, guys. As you know, we are sponsored by absolutely nobody, which is why I can just be a goofball at times. So we have now officially closed this out. I know I'm too bright to the rest of the world, but we're going to hang in here a little bit, do a little afterglow hangout, questions and answers, guys. Um, hold your questions for about 90 seconds. And the reason I say that is because some people are going to go. If you got to go, uh, see you later. Thank you for the kind words here. Lynette, thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, John. Cheers. Chris Bacon. I, I always learn something great. Glad you did. Les Scott, thanks. Louise Mahoney. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Stuart Kiora. Um, great. Good to see you. He's in New Zealand, by the way. Klaus, good to see you again. Derek Lees, good to see you again. And, and you're welcome. So you're welcome for the basics. So sometimes we do the basics and we build on them and we try to tie that into our fix my photo, which is what we did this week. And I, I guess it worked. Um, so <laughs> that means you'll be back next week, right? I, I, I actually, I'll let you guys are here every week. So we'll be back next week at 1 p.m. Pacific time next Thursday. All right. What do we got here? All right, I can drop my presenting voice now and relax because it's just us doing our afterglow. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Dojo. Janice, got to go. See you later. I'm thinking about my lunch now. Pigeon River, you got it. Good to see you again. Oh, David, you didn't offend anybody at all. Not everybody likes Lightroom, and that's okay. Steve, thank you very much for that uh, super chat. Good tutorials. Love the basics. I appreciate that $10 tip. And uh, I will be buying myself a Starbucks with that for the next two days. Thank you. And um, no problem there, David. It's okay for the um, for that. It's, uh, you know, everyone has their choice. Lots of options. Thanks. Uh, and by the way, David, if you don't... Oh, Ralph Nelson. Good to see you, buddy. Um, my good buddy there, Ralph Nelson, 
who we've had many chats and uh, we've never actually met face to face yet but we've had many online chats and emails and uh, I look forward to seeing you Ralph I will, when you, we're all out of this quarantine I'm going to come and visit you and take you up on your, your offer for that visit looking forward to it um, you got it Rama Tracy no worries yeah and by the way if you don't like Lightroom the adjustments inside of Camera Raw are identical um, so you can kind of just do that if you want. Uh, Randall, glad you learned something. Udgir, see you next week. Rolf, thanks. You've got it, Rolf. And by the way, if I used your photo here um, in any of these photos um, and you guys want the after, just hit me up and I'll be happy to email you. Just go into Photoshop Cafe, which we were having a little issue. I wonder if that issue is still there. Let me see if it's fixed right now. Yeah, we still got an issue there. So right now the site's down. It'll be up soon. Um, Matt's working on it. It's just uh, basically it just filled up and he's just fixing that right now. So it'll be up soon. Uh, if you're watching the replay, it will probably be up. And, um, and all you need to do is, uh, yeah. So uh, Hana, Crank Driven Brain, always appreciates reviewing basics. Yep, those basics are always um, crank driven as in, you know, like cranking. Uh, yeah, basics. You can never get past the basics. I love basics. Uh, being reminded of them takes us back to, you know, um, you know, sometimes ideas can spring out of it too. Hey, you've got it, Dana. And uh, oh, yes, by the way, yes. Um, just hit me up. Go to photoshopcafe.com. Um, and then just go into the contact us, hit me up if you want the after image and I'll, I'll email it to you. Just pop in there, give me your email address it's, um, and that'll be great. Or you can also hit me up on our Facebook group. Um, we have that. Love the polar bear effect. Glad you like that, Cheryl. Um, your brain is steampunk. <laughs> That's funny. Um, thanks for presentation. Yeah, you've got it there. It's good for the soul. Thank you, Stephen. Um, and John, you're welcome. So yeah, and guys, I'm also going to post, uh, what I do is from time to time as I post some of these, uh, live from lockdowns, I might post some of those on our, um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. So follow us at Photoshop Cafe. If you haven't, if you guys are on social media, do me a favor. If you haven't followed me on Instagram, go to Instagram right now. Go to Photoshop Cafe and click follow because there's a lot of live from lockdown stuff and a lot of photos on there that I share that I don't share with you guys here. Same thing with Twitter. Go into Twitter and just tap on there because I also let you guys know when we're live. So maybe you miss the notifications when we're going live. I post them on Twitter at Photoshop Cafe and also on um, Facebook at Photoshop Cafe. So if you guys are on any of those, do me a favor, just go there now. Go to Photoshop Cafe and just click on follow. Um, and then that way you're going to see the photos when I post them afterwards. Other photos that I post, I try to post a photo every day. Um, and also when I send out the newsletter for um, the live streams, I know a lot of you guys are on that list. But if you're not, or even if you are and sometimes it doesn't go through, you'll see it there. So all of these are ways for me to let you guys know when I'm going live. You've got it. Um and so anyway, guys, how are you doing? I'm one week into my sex second dose of the vaccine. So I got a little loopy last week, I think. But, you know, I, I made it. I didn't grow another head or anything like that. Um, I feel great. And um, apparently about another week from now, they call me uh, fully, fully vaccinated. So, um, yeah, so things are progressing. I know Bruce is vaccinated now. Um some of us, you know, have that option and some of us don't have that option yet. And, uh, and of course, you know, it's a personal choice. I'm not going to say, you know, if you feel like something you don't want to do, that's your choice. Um, just do what you want to do uh, when you feel comfortable. But I know things are going to start opening up a little bit now. And, uh, you know, that's uh, it's great. You know, so we're a year and something into this. And here we are. We're still doing live from lockdown. You know, when things fully open, we're going to continue to meet. Um, we'll just have to change our name. Um, channels compared to layers. So channels are looking at three things. The color of the channels is RGB, which is red, green, and blue. Those three colors make up your image. If you're working in CMYK, it's four colors. It's cyan, magenta, yellow, and that fourth color is black. And those um, make up the image. Alpha channels are basically a way of storing selections. Um, when we use masks, those are stored selections. 
is basically there. Who's going to Vegas? We're going to Vegas? All right, I'm in. Um, yes, sir. Uh, yet to have my second one, hopefully in a few weeks. Yeah, David, good for you. Um, you've got it, David. Um, so Bruce and I are heading to Vegas, I guess. There's going to be some good shows, rock shows. Um, are always fun. I don't know how many of you guys like music. I think everyone like, sort of likes music. Some of you like hip hop. Some of you like rock. Some of you like electronica. Some of you like EDM. Some of you like country. You know, people like different types of music. Um, Bruce and I like classic rock. I also like some EDM and some other stuff too, but, uh, you know, big fan of it's classic rock. Um, best thing has come out of this. Thank you, Tracy. I'm glad you like LFL. See you next week, uh, Ralph, even though he's saying to Bruce, just in case Bruce missed it. Um, do you like using more Lightroom or Photoshop? That's a good question there. Um, so what I like is both. Um, what I do is usually I start in Lightroom. I use Lightroom to catalog all my photos. I've got close to 100,000 photos in Lightroom. And that's where I tag them. I find them. And then what I do is I go and I do sort of what I just showed you guys on this image. I'll go do my basic adjustments in Lightroom. Then I'll bring it into Photoshop. And at that point from Photoshop, if I want to do any more of those adjustments, I'm going to go into Camera Raw and do them from there, you know, for color and tone. And then, you know, applying filters, masking, selections, painting, all those things I do inside of Photoshop, even sharpening I like to do in Photoshop. And then I hit save and it'll go back to Lightroom. So Lightroom's kind of like my catalog and starting, jumping, my springboard. And then most of the work I like to do is in Photoshop from there. Um, Sandy, good to see you. Uh, Orchipest, good to see you again too. Um, so it was a good question there. And um, channels for making selections you use on layers. Yeah, there you go. So um, bye for now. See you later. Um, you got it, Dave. Or oh, David. Um, didn't get much random proof. So... Um, shoot any rain any ideas uh, sunsets are always good you guys get great sunsets there in um perth so i believe that's um yeah you guys are gonna get great sunsets there um maybe some sunrises as well you know if you want to get up that early go ahead shoot sunrises shoot sunsets those are always fun um hit the ocean if you can i love the ocean diehard bridge user is tracy i love bridge too i also use that isle of right festival is going ahead this year but not until september um, yeah, New Zealand is doing really well. Actually, 660 just did a rock show, well, a music show in, uh, I believe, Mount, Mount Stadium. 50,000 people. Biggest uh, live music show of the year. You know what? New Zealand, you worked really hard at beating the virus, and it's okay. You know, they're celebrating. They earned it. They deserved it. Well done. Um, you know, they stamped out the virus in New Zealand, so they celebrated with a big show. Congratulations. Once again, you guys deserve that, and uh, maybe even a little bit of a flex to the rest of the world. Good for good for you, New Zealand. Good on you. Um, only a hundred thousand. How aggressive do I call out images? Um, I keep most of my images. If something's you know obviously out of focus or it's just black or white, it's just a mess. I delete it. Um, but I keep a lot of my mistakes as well, and the reason for that is because when I'm teaching, I don't usually teach with my best photos. I teach with my mistakes and I can show people how to fix them. So those are kind of useful. Uh, recommendations for editing underwater photos. Um, well, when you're underwater, try and get some lights. You can get those other colors in there. Um, and really, you know, a lot of that is just playing around with the white balance is going to be a big thing for underwater photos. Try and get that because uh, they can tend to obvious, obviously turn blue aqua because of the density, because that blue is more dense than yellows and reds, and so it's going to penetrate deeper, whereas the reds and blue, uh, reds and yellows are not going to penetrate as much, and you lose those quickly, so sometimes you want to kind of fix that white balance, which is why I know, you know, underwater photographers use a light, because it's, you know, yeah, you can get darker, but it's not so much that. It's about restoring the color, um, because you're losing the um, those yellows and reds and you want to bring those warm colors back in. So that's why you'll bring the light in there. Good night, Rolf. CMK, gamut warning. How do you make those photos, those principal, uh, printable? Um, you're just going to go in, adjust some curves into your CMYK curves and just bring those back um, so you can see them. So I would use curves for that. Um, and that's uh, what what's chic. I'm sorry about the name. Um, terrible 
pronouncing it Golic is your last name is that Polish it looks sort of Polish to me um, so yeah curves curves is how you would do that and uh, we've done other sessions on curves and um, we will uh, maybe do another one on curves in the future so all right guys thanks for joining us I hope you had fun Bruce has got a bounce ciao Bruce uh, thank you everybody else and I think I'm gonna bounce as well so this ends live from lockdown number 54 join us next week for 55 1 p.m pacific time thank you all kiora um good to see you all and i will see you next week